Hello everyone, my name is John Elliott and I'm the Director of Education and Community Engagement here at the Portland Symphony Orchestra and this is Online Insights where we take a deep dive into some of our upcoming performances. So the first piece on this concert is going to be Mozart's Symphony No. 38, better known as the Prague Symphony in D major. Uh, it's a great example of the classical style. Uh, it's very pristine, it's very well thought out, it's very uh, beautiful sounding, and it's a great example of a later Mozart, a more mature Mozart. So after Mozart's Symphony No. 38, we'll be moving into the Liebermann Flute Concerto, and it'll be performed by our very own PSO principal flautist, Lisa Hennessy. Let's hear what she has to say. Last fall, Leah got in touch with me and said that um, Jeffrey Kahane would be conducting our first uh, concert this season and that he was wondering if we'd like to program the Mozart Flute Concerto, which I loved that piece and that would have been great, but as it turns out, I'd already played it with Portland um, a few years ago. And so we brainstormed about it and um, I was trying to think of another piece that might fit and be similar in... Uh, style or forces used or what and I wanted to quickly get back to Leah so I asked a couple of friends and the friends the flute buddies who were brainstorming um, threw out several different kinds of pieces and thought about it and suddenly two of them at the same time said the Lieberman and then they they said the Lieberman that's the piece for Lisa that's the one um, so I listened to it and I thought that's the piece for me this is great and they're right it's completely up my alley I, I'm in love with this piece now, and it's silly to say that I'm late to the Lieberman party because he has written many things for flute. He's a prolific composer in general, but he's also written many things for flute, including his flute sonata, which absolutely everybody has played except me, which I'll do it now. The piece ends up being very accessible and very moving and very lyrical. Um, and my initial thought when I started to prepare it was, I hear a lot of Prokofiev in here. I hear a lot of Romeo and Juliet. I hear those shifting harmonies that are so surprising under a very sweeping, broad, lyrical melody that maybe takes you places you weren't expecting. And it reminded me a lot of Prokofiev, and I hear a little bit of Bernstein in that. Um, I hear a little bit of John Williams, even. Um, but it's it's absolutely beautiful music. When you listen to the second movement, the slow movement, the melody in the flute stays very consistent. It keeps following the same pattern, and yet the harmonies underneath it are shifting in such surprising ways at all times that it feels like the, the harmony is a character in the story, almost. Um, it's, it's sort of like watching a day when the sky is changing and it's going to rain um, and everything gets incredibly dark and then after the rain maybe everything all the greens are extraordinarily bright um, and then you've got the golden hour that's what the harmonies feel like in this piece to me it's just always shifting this complete utter uh, palette shift so after the Lieberman Flute Concerto, the performance will move into a piece by Tchaikovsky called Elegy from Serenade for Strings. Now just like the Mozart piece, this is also uh, from a point in Tchaikovsky's life when he was showing his sort of later stages, his more mature stages, and he very much, believe it or not, had, had Mozart in mind when he wrote this piece. He was hoping to emulate a lot of that classical style that Mozart had, so it's very light, it's very clean, it's very beautiful. And so to wrap up this performance is one more piece by Tchaikovsky called Francesca da Rimini. Uh, this is one of my personal favorites that Tchaikovsky ever wrote, and it actually was composed, uh, or rather premiered, at the very similar time that he was writing Serenade for Strings. So there's a lot of creative sort of juices that were shared between these two pieces. 
although Francesca de Rimini is really different in style. The, the uh, 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 body of work from which he was drawing to compose this piece is Dante's Divine Comedy, incredibly dramatic music, and it's not in this pristine, beautiful classical style as much as the, as the Serenade for Strings. And so there are a lot more musicians on stage. There's tuba, yay, there's trombones, there's uh, uh, French horns, and in general it, it mirrors a lot of the drama uh, and high stakes of Dante's original work. And so that's opening night for the 2018-19 season at the Portland Symphony Orchestra. I am obviously really excited about this show. Uh, and if you'd like to learn more about the music on this performance, you can catch a pre-concert conversation immediately before the show. You can ask some questions of the performers at post-concert Q&As. And you can visit our website at portlandsymphony.org. I look forward to seeing you there.